Um, yeah, I started my uh, career down here at Frankston in uh, 2003. Um, but obviously I started at Cranbourne, um, come down from there. Uh, I got drafted as a, as a rookie to St Kilda in, uh, I think it was 2000, 2000 2001 as a rookie. Um, obviously there for a year. Um, went from there and I was uh, on a sub list at Carlton. Um, played there for a bit, um, left there. And then I come down, come down here. At, uh, oh, obviously I went over to South Adelaide and played a year over there um, in the SANFL. Um, and, then I, and then I come back down here and I uh, signed at Frankston in 2003 and ended up playing here and, and finished up about 2009. Um, obviously got the, the name on the locker and everything like that, which is a big honour. Um, yeah, and then I left here and went back to my local football club, Cranbourne. Played there for four years. Um, won a flag in 2011, which is finally got one. <laughs> um, after that, um, yeah, I left Cranny. I went and became an assistant coach down down at Hastings. Um, was there um, for a year, but um, just needed to get away and, and, and sort of look after myself a bit. So um, went down to Garfield and just played down in the country for a bit, and there yeah, it was really good. Had a really good time down there. So it's been a long, long senior career at the moment, and um, you know, hopefully, I can uh, continue it. A lot of people would probably think that I was skillful, flary, um, you know, knew how to kick a goal. Um, you know, but at the start when I first come down here, it was probably it was a bit like that. Um, you know, I, I remember the when my first game. I think I, I think four points in the first quarter. And um, Lovey pulled me in at quarter time, and he's and he's he said, "What kind of nickname is Radar?" And I said, I "Was like that." And he's like, and "He goes, you can't kick goals, mate. You might as well go back to Adelaide." And uh, ever since that day, um, after that round one, like I really strive to to work on my goal kicking. And um, yeah, so you know, I spent a lot of time down here at Frankston. I was in the four line most of the time. We didn't play much midfield, but. Um, as I got older, I sort of drifted into the midfield and, and played a bit there. But uh, you know, I was I was probably one of the blokes that uh, people would look at as in um, you know if they were going to kick the ball to me, they'd know that I was going to win it. Um, you know, really, <laughs> I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to say. Like. I didn't really worry about my game. I sort of worried about other people's games and the way I could bring them into it sort of thing. So, um, yeah. All I can say is that, yeah, they'd probably, the crowd would probably love me if you were on, from their side, but opposition would probably hate me. Every day I think about it, to tell you the truth, every day. You know, watching AFL and you know, watching different players, you know that you could have, if I did make it, I could have, could have been, would have been a good, good AFL footballer. Um, you also get to learn a lot, a lot more when, you, when you're training, you know, four or five times a week and improving your skills and improving your leadership and communication with everyone around. But, um, when I got drafted, I was only 18. I was, I was young. Um, you know, back, back then, in 2000, 2001, I don't think they gave a really lot of care about us, or so-called young blokes back then. You know, like Mel Malcolm Blight was my coach back then, and um, you know, you had to, you had to book an appointment to see him. You know, like for a young kid, 
coming through who's just been drafted, he wants to learn so much, you know, like driving from Cranbourne to Moorabbin every day, you know, training, you know, weight training at Monash Uni at eight o'clock every morning. Um, you know, just wanting to learn and, you know, you know to play 19, 19 senior games for, for Springvale in my first year as a rookie and to get no feedback whatsoever from an AFL club. Um, you know, like, you sort of look at yourself and you think, you know, what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm doing as much as I can. You know, are you guys seeing this, you know? Um, but they just look at the, I was just looking at the negatives, um, you know, just trying to find, find, trying to find loopholes, the way they could get rid of players. And, you know, obviously they tried to think they could get rid of me and, you know, saying I was out drinking and, I can tell you right now, you ring me father. I said I wasn't even out. I was about watching the mate play basketball, you know, like to make up the story that they caught me drinking. Like, where's the proof? But, you know, I gave it a really good nudge when I was at Carlton. You know, like Steve Coonerham loved me, you know, and just, just the bad luck that I had, like just for them to, to cop the salary cap from draft picks and that, you know. So that was, I thought that would be my last opportunity, but then, you know, that's the reason, the only reason I went over to Adelaide was to, to try and have another crack. You know, like I was only 20, maybe 23, um, and had a massive year over there, really massive year. Um, you know, I ended up doing a, a couple of a couple of weeks training with the Port Adelaide Football Club. Um, you know, they were gonna ring me back, but, you know, they didn't ring and, you know, you think, you know, it's not going to be your last chance. You know, I, I didn't even think about playing or trying to make AFL again after that when I come down to Frankston. Um, you know, but then, you know, in 2005, I had a, f a few phone calls from Collingwood and Richmond after, um, you know, I come runners up in the league, goal kicking, you know, from a, from a half full flank just to be pipped by James Poziali. Um, you know, and then you get your hopes up again, you know, at the age of 20, you know, 25, I think I was. Um, you think well, you're not going to look at me, you know, 25 years old, and that that they there wasn't even any talk about mature age rookies or you know mature age recruits, you know, around then, and I didn't even bother. Like when they when they called me, I said, yeah, you know, like I was lardy dar about it because how many times have I been knocked back? You know, why would they want to pick me up? You know, um, and, and obviously it didn't eventuate, but you know, I don't regret anything. I don't regret anything that I've done in my football career. Um, you know, I've done as much as I could to the point, you know, to, you know, playing for Victoria, being all Australian. Um, you know, the only thing was I just didn't play an AFL game. Um, if that's anything to go by, like, let people talk, that's them, you know, like, I know what I've done, I know where I've been, I know what I can do. Um, if I was given that chance, I would have gave it a crack, but you know, at the age of 35, I'm still playing. Um, still love it, still enjoy it. Um, hopefully I've got a couple more years left in me, so see how we go. Do you think the uh, secure situation has anything to do with clubs in the track? Um, yeah, it might have, because there was a few rumours, you know, going around that I was at the Hallam Hotel, and you know, I'm not scared to say it. Like, yeah, I did go, I did go with my mates, because I still wanted to have a social life as well. I didn't want to be one of these people that, you know, they got drafted the AFL, and like you, the, the kids these days, like a number one draft picks on a base salary of fifty grand, like a rookie back when I got drafted. I was on 12,500 for a whole year, you know, like, it's a big step, you know, and um, I still want to have a social life, I love, I love me mates, you know, I could always put me mates before myself and, um, you know, when I, when I was, when I did go out with my mates, I was driving anyway, because I knew I had training the next morning, and there's no way I was going to go to train and smell like piss or smell like alcohol or anything like that, so, um, but that was me. I was I was the same down here at Frankston. Like, you know, if the boys want to go, I'll go out. If the boys want to have a drink, I'll have a drink. Um, 
probably my downfall was probably I didn't learn how to say no, really. But um, you know, there's a few rumors. But I, feel, I know the I know the true rumor. I know the true fact. Who said it? What was said? Um, I'm not going to name names, but if I ever see him again, he'd know about it, and that's that's from the bottom of my heart. You know that when it, when it did happen, I was furious. You know, I was I wanted to rip I wanted to rip his head off, but these days I probably if I did see him, I probably wouldn't bother. I'd probably laugh at his face, um, knowing the fact of what I know what he's done as an AFL player. But in my eyes, I probably would have achieved the same thing that he did. Maybe better, maybe not. But I know I would have. I would have been a genuine, genuine forward, half flank, small pocket, half order in the AFL. I would have made it for sure um, if given if I was given the opportunity. But. You know, like I said, I don't regret anything. No regrets. No regrets whatsoever. Um, my body was my body was done at the end of 2009. I was supposed to get a hip replacement in 2006. Um, just from getting battered and wear and tear from, from playing in the VFL, um, training three, nearly four nights a week and driving from Cranman to Frankston. And, you know, it was like, I should have just rented a house down here really. But, um, yeah, by the time I left here, I was, I was done. I couldn't put my body through what I was through, you know, pre-season after pre-season to do that with, with, with what my body was going through. And if, to this day, I still, still haven't got my body right. Like, I still got to see a surgeon about my hips and my shoulders and everything like that. But I'm too busy having a drink during off-season, so... Um, <clears throat> but if, I had no regrets, mate. No regrets whatsoever. Like I said, to play 100 plus games here at Frankston um, was an honour. Um, you know, I represented this club for Victoria three times. Um, you know, I made team of the year a couple of times. And then they're, they're not accolades I look about myself. It's, it's the club that I was representing. So for Frankston to have players do that, you know, like, is an honour in Macy's eyes. Like it gives Macy to talk about the club and talk about players such as myself and 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 rigor and um, you know players that have, have made you know the Vic squad and, and stuff like that. Um, you know because you you know you can always look back you know when you walk into my house like I've got the Vic jumper in a frame and you know you're always going to see it you're always going to remember it. But for the footy club to re to talk about it and remember it, it's probably more of a, an odd, a, a deal for me than, than anything else. So, no regrets when I left here. I put 110% in of what I could, so, no regrets. Um, yeah, there's one, there's one down at this um, deep left-hand pocket um, I got the ball and I knew I couldn't turn inside because it, he was going to get me straight away so I turned boundary side I didn't have much 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 room to work with it was probably a, not even a 10 cent piece to work on and I sort of kicked it pretty much over my head around my body sort of thing and it's gone through and the crowd was like, the crowd was quiet like a stun of how how it went through, I couldn't believe it went through really, but, and then, you know, about two seconds later, after we just saw, with everything that was quiet, it was just erupted. Um, but there's been, there's been a 
few few down here. Um, yeah, I kicked a, I think I kicked a goal out of the middle once. I took a couple of bounces and the, you know, when I left and come back, I played an elite game here for for MPNFL and against others and Murray. And um, I kicked a winning goal. I haven't been back down this this ground and. <clears throat> um, you know, a good five years, and then to kick the winning goal, like I knew which way the wind was going, and I knew where to kick it and all that. So I knew I wasn't going to miss it. Um, but the, you know, the, the crowd that for an interleague interleague uh, game, you know, they just uh, erupted, and just to get the chills, and you know, like just to win the game off your own boot. That was probably one up there as well, so. But it was more a celebration. Because <laughs> I used to get some of the worst fucking players on me, just to play on me. Was, they used to terrorise me. But, and then when, when I kicked the goal, I used to let them know about it. So it was more a celebration when, <clears throat> when I kicked it. Like I knew what celebration I was going to do before I even kicked it, really, so. Uh, but yeah, love the goal. Um, still do, still do love a goal. Still do like a celebration. <laughs> so, always love kicking. Oh, definitely, mate. Like the core players that I played with were like, you know, um, obviously Big Normie, Daniel Clark, um, Neil Winterton. You know, I always catch up with those blokes down at the past players' days every year. Um, you know, Sean Pollard, I played against him when I was at Cranny, he was at Beaconsfield. Um, you know, we always had a beer after the game. Um, I knew, I didn't, I was, I was, I was seeing Riga for a little bit, but um, Riga went to Essendon and I sort of lost contact with Riga for a bit. And when he got the list, I caught up with him a few times just to make sure he was going all right, like he didn't lose his head. You know, with, you know, I knew he got golden staff and all that kind of stuff. So I was sort of in the newspapers and, you know, you've obviously got Facebook and you can sort of keep up with different players and friendships and all that. And it doesn't take much just to send out a text just to see how they're going and that. But, um, you know, I've seen, I've seen Ash Roberts a couple of times. Um, but, you know, every, every player, like, has got their own family and all that now, or, you know, at my age. and. You know, I know family always comes first, so it's sort of hard to try and organise, you know, catch up every now and So it's good these past play days come around because, you know, it's even if you didn't get a phone call and you come down, you know, you're going to meet, you know, the players that you play with and obviously the players that they had played here before. Um, and it's always a good day. You know, it might be only once a year, but and you sort of have a crack. It feels like a little mini footy trip for those players anyway. So, um, but I've seen a few boys at the races a couple of times. Um, I know Neil and Winnow like to have a bet here and there. And, um, you know, Winnow's coaching down at Mulgrave and I know he had a really good year with winning the flag and all that kind of stuff, so he's probably tied up with that. And I know Rigger was down, was he at Bendigo? He might have been playing down at Bendigo. I think he might have been captain for Essendon. Um, I don't know what Norm is doing. He's just been a big family man at the moment. He was, he was doing a rucking role with Springvale when I was at Cranbourne. I've seen him a few times there. Um, Ash, I wouldn't have a clue. I know Mickey Ablett. He's doing something with the with the AFL. Um, Heinzey, I think he's still chipping away. He's probably got his twin boys. He might have another one. I'm not sure. Yeah. Other than that. With uh, James McCormack, don't know. Um, obviously, Mitchie's playing up the country. Um, Crowey was coaching at the Seaford. I think he's gone back to Summit this year, he's saying. Uh, yeah, well, other than that, like I've seen a, a few boys. Uh, I've seen Potsy's old man, if you don't, so I've seen Potsy and. Um, yeah, other than that, you sort of, you know, if you're out, you see him. If you don't, you, just, you know, it's 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 not a, it's no, like, I wouldn't say it's no skin off, you know. So, but 
when you see him out, you'd have a beer with him, no doubt about it. Um, but yeah, like obviously with families and everything like that, I think they come first before obviously friendships. But they're lifelong friends. Like I could make a phone call to any one of them, and they come down for a beer, and they'd probably be there. You know what I mean? So um, they'll be with me forever. I only played under two, um, which was obviously I played with Brett Lovett, played with him for I think it was five years, and um, obviously with Shannon Grant for that year, or well, Brett Lovett for six and him for one year or something like that. But yeah, Brett probably, probably the best coach that I've had in my career taught me a lot, taught me so much, not just on the field, but off the field. Um, you know, he was there, he was there when I know it sort of needed someone, you know, like obviously with the loss of me, with my mother in 2004. Um, and he was, you know, he was just there, him and Dick Cutherson, um, you know, he was the team manager at the time and they just sort of let me go. but. You know, if I ever needed them, they were there. Um, I actually spoken to Dick a few times, but I haven't, I've, haven't seen Brett. You know, I've called him up a few times and that, but it'd be good to catch up with him on the past players or something like that. But um, and I learned a lot of Shannon, like him coming straight from AFL, um, and coming down here and, you know, I think he was, probably wasn't really the coach, but because he was still a player, he still wanted to be a, a player in a way, um, so he was still learning. Obviously, he was trying to learn off us senior blokes. Um, um, but you know, we were sort of on our way out from the footy club, and when he was coming in, so um, I'm not sure how he went the following year or anything like that. But I know that he's he's doing pretty well for himself now with, with Western Bulldogs or something like that. So yeah, other than that. Um, He's probably he's probably been the best coach, but love it. Um, but Doug Doug Coop when I played at Cranny, um, probably the most disciplined coach that I've met. Obviously him being a copper and everything like that. But um, you know to get Cranbourne the way they were, I've always always wanted to punch on and had a reputation for it as well. To get them from going from net to um, you know making finals in 2010, winning a flag 2011, and then losing the next four. Um, that wasn't Coop, but you know, he won, you know, he got them to a grand final three times. Um, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal person to get that football club under control and, and get them settled. So he wouldn't be far behind Brett Lovett, but you know, them two together, would make a good deal, I reckon. You can't go past Michael Ablett. Um, played on the halfback line. He won, I think, five best and fairest in a row. Um, Ash Roberts, both of them off the halfback line, were unstoppable. Um, we had big Normie in the ruck. Um, you know, obviously, as of when he came down here and played that year. Um, you know, I think I just missed out playing with like John Giorgio and, and all them kind of guys, but Bev Malloy when he played here was was, was unstoppable. Um, Marcus Mingliani, when he matured, he was really, really good, really good inside midfielder. Um, Aaron Murray, you know, like, pity with, with the injuries that he got, you know, he, he could have been something really big down here, even though he was, but he could have been bigger. He could have taken you know the lead by by the scruff of the neck. Um, Sammy Carpenter when he was down here, like just phenomenal the way he goes about his football. But um, yeah, there was a few Neil Winters in. Um, yeah. A lot of good players I played with. Can't, can't name them all. They're probably 
I look around, James McCormack, um, just good, good footballers, you know, good country footballers that have come to play VFL level and, and got a name for themselves, you know. Yeah, they're probably the main ones. And then he had, you know, the, when I was sort of leaving here, there was probably, you know, the, obviously the Mitchy Boswoods coming through. Um, I was like, watching Mitchie's the other day, PK was still playing out here, PK. Um, yeah, they were, they were all starting to step up and, and you know, becoming the leaders at the club, so. Yeah, that was about it. It does. Um, like when I first walked in here, it's, it's changed a lot. Um, you know, I've obviously stepped up with the um, with the weights and you know, obviously with the bikes and everything like that. Because when I was here, it was we didn't really have much. We just sort of had you know, a bench press and you know, a few dumbbells here and there, which I think we know took most of them anyway. Him and Rigger. Um, but yeah, walking in here, it's you know you've played here. You know you've played your years here and. Um, just looking on the lockers, you know, just not just with my name, but you know, even with you know Clarky and um, Michael Ablett, Ash Roberts, um, you know, even Mitch, Mitchy Boswood, um, you know, they're players that you can look back and have memories on that, that you've that you've done the hard yards and you know it's a, for a club that's you know gets talked about a lot, not winning many games and all that, but you know we made we made the prelim in 2007. And lost by a point, you know, um, and we had a we had a really good side. Like, you know, we only we only recruit that we probably picked up was probably Aaron Edwards, but um, we were just really close. Like, and when you come in here, you, you feel you feel home. Like, you feel like you haven't left. And you know, even just past players' days, when you come down here and actually look at the boys, you know, many of the boys that are playing here now probably don't even know who I am, but. Um, you know, you're always welcome when you come down here. You know, like as I walked in just today, um, Macy offered me a beer. And, um, I'll probably go back and have one with him actually. But um, yeah, just it feels yeah you've done you've done your time. It's good. The most player would have been Alan Tuvey from Winnie, he played Williamstown, he played Collingwood. Just didn't give me any space. And I knew I was quicker than him or anything like that. Um, and it could have been, a, you know, from, from our team, like a bit of um, ball work or, you know, coming into the forward line, but it just seemed every time we played Williamstown, he just never gave me nothing. And um, so I hated playing them. But there was, a, there was a day where I played at Shepley Oval when I just left St Kilda and I was come down to Frankston and we were playing against Springvale and um, I hated him. Like it was... But there was a few St Kilda players playing. It was like Liam Montagnaga, um, Stephen Young. Um, and that day I kicked probably one of the best goals ever. Like I took seven bounces from the half back line. Um, and then I think big Barry Brooks was chasing me and uh, he just missed me. Um, but Lee Montagna was playing on me that day. I kicked seven on him. So to get delisted from St Kilda and kick seven on him and then he's gone on to be a player, it's a phenomenal AFL player. Um, have much much respect for him, but you know, to go from there and yeah, I can't really say much more. Um, yeah, but probably he was to kick seven on him was probably a highlight of my career, and then to have you know there was there was a couple of um, back, back half back black blank, half back flankers that. Um, the bloke from Richmond that 
I've always played on me at Coburg. Um, he always gave me a tough time. There was a couple of times there where um, Jake King played on me when he was at Coburg before he got drafted. And he was only a small back pocket, but he played on me. I kicked six on him a few times. And then, you know, they're the kind of things I look at, like, you know, I look at me being a small forward and kicking goals on, on players like that, and then you see them get drafted and to go on and play so many games, and you, you think, how and why? And, but, you know, they obviously a couple more years matured when they got drafted and learned a lot more. Obviously learned a lot more playing at a VFA club where it's affiliated um, compared to being down here where we were staying alone. But that's the way we liked it. Um, you know, what we did on field is pretty much what we did off field. So. Oh, when I left here, is was um, like I always wanted to go back to play local footy, and I, I didn't want to be um, one of those blokes that you know come back from playing high level and you know just went sort of lardy dar about going back to, to local footy and, and you know going there just to play for cash. Like I've never ever played for money, never will. Um, you know, it was just an honour, obviously a bonus to get you know what I was offered and everything like that, but. Um, I always try, I love training, I always, was always trying to improve my training and um, you know like you know, between going back to Cranbourne and when I played the four years there I, I think I maybe missed you know probably three or four sessions in the whole four years that I played there um, and that's probably would have been because of probably maybe my daughter but um, I was just always striving, I was always striving to try and be you know, because the young kids, you know, as you get older, the young kids are coming up and, you know, like I was pretty, pretty competitive and pretty challenging. Like I didn't want, you know, I, I was obviously playing midfield and, you know, I got myself really fit. Like I was fitter playing local footy than I was down here. Um, you know, like I didn't want young kid coming in and, and sort of taking me spot or anything like that. Um, you know, so I was pretty much, you know, striving every year. Like I was always starting training really early. Um, you know, and then I left when I left Cranbourne. Um, you know, obviously went down to Hastings as assistant coach. Um, you know, just to just to see what it was like on the coaching side of things. But you know, I was also a player when I went down there as well. Um, you know, and obviously I had a big year that year because you know I was going through a divorce. Um, you know, and, and obviously had had Evie and a little girl. And um, so I was sort of trying to juggle her and, you know, the, her and my little daughter and, and trying to get down to Hastings and play footy and, you know, trying to, just trying to be on the, you know, obviously being an assistant coach, you've got to be on the upside of things. You can't always bring what you're going through down. So I try not to do that. Um, you know, so when it comes to training, I'd always switch off and, you know, switch on the training. And, you know, like my downtime was obviously the drive home going from Nero back to Cranbourne and you know I could sort of think about stuff on the other side like then. Um, sometimes people forget like what players go through um, mentally, not so much physically off you know on, on the field and that but mentally um, you know it could be work and, and, and everything like that it could be and people don't know because when people get to training they'll, they won't let you know they'll, they'll switch off and just train but some people have body language and it shows and some people don't but you know that was the thing I learned as an assistant coach and you know through the young boys like you just need to, when you talk to young kids they'll tell you um, a lot of older blokes won't but and it seeds through young kids because they all hang out together and you know like once you talk to one you can talk to the whole group um, yeah, once once I left Cranbourne and, and done the, the assistant coach thing with the Hastings and all that, um, you know my my role as as a as a footballer um, was to teach the young kids what I've been taught, um, obviously through my VFL years and everything like that. 
um, just to just to strive, just to improve every time. Like, don't just try and stick at the one thing and and, and do that constantly because um, you do that, and you're going to get nowhere. You know, you, you you can go through and and you can be a twos player and be a fringe player and you know you might get you know three or four games here and there. And, but if if you're training and improving and and the coach can see. Um, your football will always improve. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If you if you if you're challenging yourself and you want to improve, you're going to get better. It doesn't matter what age you are. Um, yeah, and that, and at the moment, like I'm, I'll be 35 in April, coming next footy season, and um, I still want to go again. Still want to play. But it's you know like I get the thrills of watching these young kids come through and some of the talent that these young kids have got um, amazes me like just the, their running c compatibility and their, their, s their endurance and just their skills both sides of the feet um, you know you, you just hope you know 10 years from now that you actually watch them on TV but you know, that's 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 my goal and, um, I do want to coach, like co co coaching I do want to coach eventually, um, but you know I sort of just want to see my little girl grow up a bit more a few years now and sort of make sure I can get a routine with her and once that I might be able to sit down because um, I've had a few clubs um, ring me to be coached and, and um, you know, I've sort of rejected it, um, not so much because I didn't want to do it, it was just the time and effort that I knew I couldn't commit to. So. That was the only reason I couldn't do it. Um, yeah, but once, once I get in a routine and, and, and get things the way I want it, um, and then I'll look at it, look at the sort of thing. So I really, I really want to do it and we really want to get there. So hopefully a couple more years, you know, get down the track and then we'll, uh, we'll get there. So. Um, the hair was, I, had a, I was dating, I was, I was dating a girl who was a hairdresser, so um, you know, the first couple of years I was down here, she was, she was sort of doing her apprenticeship and everything like that, so I was pretty much used as a dummy, like even when she had to do different stuff for, for her boss and that, so <coughs> I think it was a few times there where I, I think I had checkers down one side and I had a big blonde, you know, Obviously skunk down the middle and had sort of blonde hair one week and then pink the next and um, yeah I, was, I think I wasn't until 2000 it might have been 2006 2007 when I got my first hat um, and then yeah sort of eventuate from there so um, these days I've actually got my own tattoo studio. Um, so I do do my own tattoos from the studio and, and all that kind of stuff and really take a liking to it. So if you ever want a tattoo guys, give me a call, come down. Um, but yeah, it was, I was, like they say, when you get your first tattoo, it's pretty addictive. Um, but yeah, I've got a, got a few more spots in my skin to go. So um, yeah, that was, yeah, the, the hair sort of flown away now and gone and so I just sort of keep it low and trim and sort of wear a hat these days, really. <laughs> yeah, other than that, yeah, it was good days there when I used to have hair. Good times was always footy trips. I love footy trips. I don't think I missed a footy trip down. Oh, maybe one. I think I missed one footy trip. but. Um, that's what I play for, really. Like, yeah, you you win your accolades as, as a you know your personal accolades, and you know, you've got your, your team accolades um, and goals and that. But when it got to round you know 17, 18, and I knew we weren't playing finals, but I was so looking forward to footy trips, and, and I've got stories that last a lifetime. You know, like I'm not going to mention any now, but 
um, there's some some real funny ones and some you know like some real horrid ones where you know like a bloke like you know Benny Poole who fell off the, you know, fell off the story and broke his ankles you know like that just shattered our footy trip when you know we went to Queensland and I was I was in tears for the bloke you know because he had a massive year that year as well you know playing AFL and everything like that and um, you know, just and then you had trips like when we went to Early Beach. Um, it was just good, like good bunch of blokes to play with footy here, and then you know to to go out with them on a footy trip on a plane and and drink with them. Like you drink, you know, you have your your lock ins and you know your mad Mondays, and um, there was a few a few really good mad Mondays here, <laughs> actually, but. Um, you know, just well, I always look forward to footy trips because I knew you got away, um, and it was you were free. You were free from you didn't have to talk about footy. And because me at Mondays, you always seem to always seem to sit down with someone and, and talk about the year. And, and I, I was always one of the blokes I hate talking about footy. Like you, know, you go out and, and people recognise him. And all they want to do is, oh, how's your footy going? And I sort of try and steer away from like, um, but. Like, I'd rather talk about something else, like. But yeah, footy trips were the best, because even if they wanted to talk, like, I probably would talk, because you're on the piss and you, you're just talking shit anyway, really. It's just funny moments, like, it's just the funniest things come, that happen that you wouldn't see people do in your eyes down here, but when they get away, they're a different bloke. So, that's what I liked. When I left here, I would probably to be remembered as a team player. I brought, obviously being a half forward and, and everything like that, I brought a lot of people into the game. Um, you know, maybe I was, a lot of people said if I was six foot one, I would have been a centre forward in the VFL because I was a target for our team. So I was always getting the ball kicked to me. Um, so I brought a lot of players into the game, which is, which is what I looked at, like, probably wasn't, you know, I wouldn't say I was a tough inside midfield, like, if, if I had to get my own ball, I'd go and get it, but um, my asset was my pace, so, you know, if I was always trying to get the loose foot in and run onto a loose ball and, um, you know, get the handball receiver or anything like that, but, you know, you've got to have players like that, and you've got your tough inside book players, and they're the ones that have to get the ball out to the to the to the running players and all that. So um, to remember, I was probably what, a skillful, um, creative, um, yeah, probably more of a skillful, creative footballer. Um, I know um, Paul Kennedy. Labelled me as no f the Michael Jordan of country football, and you know Jordan always won the ball in his hands, and he's probably right. Like, always won the footy, like you know. When people kick the other people, I'm like, you know, why? You know, like because I knew I had 100% in my game that you know, that I would win every time I play. Like if you kick the ball to me, I was going to win it for our team. So. Um, Probably, people probably looked at me as arrogant, in a way. Um, but I wouldn't say arrogant is in, like I didn't care what people thought. Um, cause I, but I knew I had the ability and I was 100% behind my ability. Um, so, it's hard to judge, like, I'm probably a player that will probably be remembered down here. I would have loved, I was loved by everyone. And like I said, from opposition, I probably would have been the number one person written on the board that I was getting tagged. So, if 
we could play here 18, 19 games and not play away, um, I'd be a legend. But to leave here, I've, I'd probably be remembered as One of, or the one of the top country footballs to come through VFL. Um, probably the unlucky spoke to, to not get drafted. So you can look at it at all angles, or you know, whichever way you want to talk about it. But um, I know what the time and effort that I put in here to get what I did out of my body and ability. Um, Was, was what I needed, was what I wanted and, and what I achieved. So, um, yeah, probably skillful, creative. And I was always talking, so. Um, it's hard to judge, really, hard to judge. Um, nicknames. Well, I've always had Beza, because um, obviously my last name and anything like that, but um, when I left Adelaide and come down here, I obviously got the nickname Radar, um, and that sort of stuck for a bit, for a while. Um, but I wasn't the guy that sort of gave the names. I think Crowey used to give the nicknames out when he'd come down here. Well, he liked to talk it up, he was giving them out. Um, but I sort of just like, um, you know, if, if someone was given a nickname, you sort of try and run with it, try and see if they can keep it. But um, yeah, other than that, it was just, it was more um, Bez or, or Beza. Um, you know, I don't think anyone really knew me first name. <laughs> tell you the truth, but um, I'd always got caught in footy trips and that. You know, you had to try and say someone's name. No, but yeah, but um, yeah, I didn't really get that many nicknames down here, so I sort of stuck with the, with the two really. Probably the last maybe nine months um, since I've been with my new girl and and ever sort of settled down with a house and everything like that. Um, you know, going through a divorce is big, big for, a, for you know, not just me or for her as well, but um, it was more my daughter. Like that was all I was worried about. And um, these days, I'm happy, very happy. Um, obviously. I'm off work at the moment through to for a cut finger and that, but um, I'm enjoying every day, you know. Obviously, I've got a stepson as well with, with my partner Nicole, and um, you know, he lives with us and he's just full on, so he keeps me on my toes every day. And um, yeah, but I can't, can't, can't possibly be any more happier. Maybe more money, but that's about it. You can't, everyone's, off, everyone's always asking for more money, but. Um, you know, I'm still concreting, which is, I shouldn't be really, but I love it. I love that job, still, still strive, you know, get to work every day. Um, yeah, footy and probably be sailing a little. I always think about when I'm not playing footy, like what will I do on the weekends, stuff like that. That's the fear that I don't want to do, but I know it has to come to an end sometime. Um, but at the moment, like, life's good. Life's really good. Um, couldn't be any more happier, I think. So, going well.